Hi and welcome to this driving lesson video where we're going to be taking a look at how to turn left. As always with my videos there'll be some funny video clips along the way showing you times when I've seen members of the public getting left turns badly wrong. Now we're going to start off with a quick theory element where I'll be talking for five to ten minutes about the theory behind turning left. I'm then going to go for a drive and I'll de be demonstrating lots of left turns and you'll be able to see both the forward and the rear cameras as well as pedal cam so you can see what my feet are doing. Anyway, let's start off with the theory and let's get going. Okay, so we're going to take a look at how to turn left using this whiteboard and a pen and possibly a pen top as well to represent the car. Now the first and most important thing you need to know about junctions is how to spot a junction. You'd be amazed how many instructors forget to teach people how to actually see junctions. And you might say, well it's obvious when there's a junction coming up, I can see it. Um, well if you look at this video clip here, you'll see how not everybody sees junctions. Okay, so how do you avoid that happening to you? Well, first of all, let me draw the road in. Imagine there's a road going along there, and there's another road down here. Now, we're going to be looking at just left turns today. Right turns will come as a separate topic. So, if you're travelling up to this road, toward the end of the road, how would you know that the end was there? Well, there's a few ways you can do it. Normally, you would have lines on the floor, like this. So, you normally get two over there, and then one over there. Now my drawings aren't brilliant, I'm no artist by the way, but I hope this will be enough for you to understand and I am drawing this upside down, so bear that in mind when you watch the video. So the two lines and the one line, what do they mean? Well normally but not always, two lines is where you come out and one line is where you go in. So two lines normally mean give way. And I'll say normally because there are always exceptions to any rule that you can never say always do this, always do that. But normally, that's what I mean. So if you're travelling towards the end of the road, you'll usually have the centre markings. There'll be three, four or five of those markings. Can be any number, but there are normally three or four or five around where I live. And then the double lines is where you give way. So if you don't see the lines on the floor, how else would you know they're there? Well, if we just turn this for a moment, you will get an upside down triangle pointing downwards, which means it'll slow down. Now, if the triangle is blank, that means that the giveaway is coming up soon and normally underneath it would have a sign saying something like a hundred feet or whatever it is, hundred yards and that tells you how far away the end of the road is. If you just get a blank one that's what it's about but if you say it's giveaway written inside the triangle that means that the giveaway is actually there so if you see giveaway written inside the triangle that's where the giveaway actually is. Now what are the kind of ends of the road can you get? Well, for, get rid of that for now. What would it mean if that was a solid line? Now, I won't rub that out just for the moment because it's drawn quite neatly there. But if that was a solid line across the end of the road instead of the dotted one, what does a solid line mean? Well, a solid line, solid line means stop. Whereas that only means give way. So what's the difference between give way and stop? Well, give way means you don't have to stop dead. You can roll up, look, and as long as it's safe to do so, you can carry on. Now, many people get this incorrect, and it's, as I've said before in previous videos, probably the single biggest thing that people teach and learn incorrectly is they get taught you've got to stop every time and go. You don't have to do that, but for the moment we are going to, because when you first start driving, it is a good idea to see if you can stop at the end of the road and then go. Um, we won't be doing that for long, that will only be for a few attempts, and then we'll soon be moving on to the one 
where you don't stop, where you come up, you roll up, you look and you carry on if it's safe to do so. So solid eye means stop and with that one you would get, you won't see this that well on the video, it's a bit of a messy one that, but <laughs> you will get a red octagon, an eight sided shape like that with stop written in the middle. For the moment we're not bothered about stop signs but we are going to be stopping on these just for the sake of practice. Normally that is not what you would do. So when you get to a junction there's a thing you have to use called MSPSL and I'm just going to write this in. Now this goes from bottom to top. So when you're driving you often write things kind of upside down because when you're reading normally you normally would read from top to bottom. When you're driving we write it from bottom to top because you're travelling along the road this way. So first of all let's have a look at how you come out of a junction. Now this MSPSL is probably the biggest thing, thing that you ever learn when you learn to drive. Every single thing you ever do comes back to this. There's this clutch control and roundabout, so the three massive topics. So let's go over MSPSL. So what's the M stand for? Well the first thing you do is mirrors. I'm just going to write this in. So if you're turning left, which mirrors should you be checking? Now the minimum you should do is the middle mirror and the left mirror. The middle one, so you know what's coming up behind you, and the left one, so you know if there are any bikes, any cyclists or anything at all coming down the left of you. Now it is quite unusual for you to get things coming down the left because normally you will be travelling faster than a push bike, but if you slow down they can catch you up. And particularly in heavy traffic, you'll see a lot of accidents caused because people simply don't look in the left mirror. They look in the middle mirror, signal, and then they go and wipe out cyclists when they turn. So you must check your left mirror well before you turn left. Now I mentioned there what the next thing is, the S. I may be doing a separate video on this by the way because this is such an important thing to go over, the MSPSL. Again this is something very few pupils ever get taught. It's amazing how many people simply don't teach this and it's one of the biggest things you should know. So you've done the mirrors, next thing you do is the signal. Now all you do is simply signal left. But the timing of the signal can change depending on what's going on around you. For example, you may have a side road here which you need to pass before you indicate. It may be you're about to pass a parked car and you don't want to signal left and then move out to go around a parked car. There are many different times and different ways that this can work, but the signal can be moved around because of the reasons I just gave. The others, you should never really ever move. Now I don't like to say ever, I don't like to say never ever do this and never do that, but normally the signal is the only one that you can move around. So you might do mirrors, not signal, because there's something going on behind you, or you may decide to indicate earlier because there is something going on behind you. It depends. But mirrors, signal, and what comes next? What's the P? Well P is for position. So position, how should that be if you're coming out of the road? And I'd say again, this is the biggest one of them all that people get wrong. Your position should be roughly around there. Now again, not the best diagram because the car is too small and the road's too big. <laughs> it's not meant to be to scale. I will be doing this myself in a moment and I'll be driving around and showing you this. Position is vital. It should be so that when you pull up at the end of the road, you should already be facing left. So that when you move off, you don't have to steer a lot. I always do this thing with my pupils called steer and then gear. Many pupils have this thing where they're desperately trying to change the gear round here. You don't need to be changing gear there. You can leave the gear till the end. For the moment, remember, we are going to be stopping on the giveaway lines, which you wouldn't normally do, but we are for now. So position is important. Imagine if you get to the end of the road and your position is wrong, then you're stuck. If you position there, you may be forced into having to turn right because you can't just suddenly change your position. If your gear is wrong, you can easily just go from, let's say, 3 down to 1. You can change the gear easily. You can't change your position that easily. So position comes before the gear, which comes in with speed. Okay, so speed is all about how fast you emerge from a junction. Now, for the moment, we're going to be stopping on all these. So the speed is going to be zero, which is going to be stopping dead. Maybe applying the handbrake, maybe not, and coming down into first gear. The last thing you do is look. Now that might sound obvious, but you'd be amazed how many people don't look at junctions, a bit like the person shown in this video clip. What you're going to see is somebody in a moment who comes flying out of a junction and they don't even seem to see us because I haven't bothered looking. 
And then what made me laugh about this one is he opened their window and started shouting us about, oh, bloody learners, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> it's completely their fault. Just watch what happens in this video. We're going down the road and a car comes flying out of a junction, doesn't look, and then opens the window and shouts at us. If you're emerging onto a road and there's a vehicle here, you have to see that vehicle and give way. You're coming out of the road, this vehicle is already on the road. It doesn't matter if that vehicle is parked here, for example. This vehicle on this road here where the pen is, they have right of way over these. The car may be on your side where you'd normally give way. It doesn't matter if there's a junction there. These people have to give way to you. And I remember when I was taught this by people many years ago, because a good instructor learns things off the pupils, and I had a people who worked in insurance, and they told me how many times this happens where people come out of junctions, and they're sure they're in the right because a car here is stopping this car, doesn't apply. If you're at the give way, you must give way to anyone on this road, even if they're driving down the wrong side of the road. Anyway, have a look at the video clip, and then we'll come back. Okay, so there you go. So this is just a brief overview. Now, as I always say on these videos, these videos are not meant to replace driving lessons. These are to supplement your driving lessons with me. So if you're taking lessons with me, you can watch this back and you might think, oh yeah, I remember him saying that on lessons. I'm not covering every single last point I could, because I could go on for ages and ages talking about this. But let's have a quick look at how to turn into a road, and then we'll get moving. So turning into a road from there, very similar, you do the mirrors, middle mirror, left mirror, left signal as and when needed. Position should be about a metre from the kerb depending on the width of the road. Speed should be down to about 10 miles an hour roughly in second gear. And a good way of doing this is when you're new, try and make it so they're about there. Now that's about, I don't know, three, or three four, five metres from the turn. You should have everything done by about there. So the gears are done. You feature off the pedals, you're just cruising around the corner just to give you a feel of, um, of how to steer. Steering is one of the main things people have trouble with with this and I will be going over that when you watch me driving in a moment. And then of course you look around the corner for any um, any cars that are part there. The looking before by the way I didn't fully explain, when you get here you should look a minimum of three times. So when you're coming out of the junction you should look at least right, left and then right. So you're looking at what's coming on the approach, if there are any vehicles parked here, and then looking at what's coming down the road again. That is only the minimum, I do recommend you look more than that, I recommend you look at least twice both ways to make it easier to remember. So that's just a brief um, overview there, I'm now going to move the cameras around and let's get some driving done, because theory is great, but we need to put the theory into practice now, so let's get driving. Okay, so we're back. I just had to move the car forward a little bit because the bus pulled up opposite me and was blocking the road. So I've just moved the car forward and now we're going to go and look at some left turns. Okay, so off we go. So I'm going to be doing going in and coming out of left turns in a moment. So first thing I'm going to do is get towards where the corner is. Now this corner you can see on the left in the distance just coming up. So I'll do my middle mirror, my left mirror and then signal left about now. I brake just a little bit, when the engine starts to struggle, just before it struggles, clutch down to, pedals off, turn, feed in the wheel through your hands. Now again, this is a huge topic which takes a long time to go over. Same again now, mirrors, signal, brake just about this time, because I'm not going to stop or change gear, and off we go. Now by the time you do corners like this, you should already have a full understanding of the pedals about the brake and the clutch and the clutch and the brake. I've spoken about that before in other videos about the order that you should do the pedals in. Um, so yeah, that kind of stuff should be second nature by now. Uh, as this kind of given way kind of thing should be something you've practiced before when you start doing left turns. It depends on where you are and you know the order that you're learning. So at the end of the road, I want to go left again. So I can see the markings on the floor. I do mirrors, signal, brake, 
crunch. I'm not rushing the gear, I don't need the gear just yet. I'm going to roll, stop, handbrake on, first gear, look at least twice both ways, and off we go. So, on that one, you notice how I didn't rush the gear change. This is like start one of the biggest faults that pupils make, is they rush the gear changes, and they're trying to get down to one. Now if I pull up on the left here, I'll see now because I can't stand well behind me. I'm going to brake, clutch down. You do not have to come down the gear immediately. Now, I'll mention this again because it's something I know people will mention. Um, coasting, what is coasting? Coasting is when you have the clutch held down when you're driving. But there are some times when coasting is necessary. You have to coast, otherwise you couldn't drive. If you, if you never ever coast, how would you change gear? Because you've got to have the clutch down to change gear. Um, people have this thing about you've got to come down the gears in order. You don't. That's a very, very old-fashioned way of learning. And if you're being taught to come down the gears in order, um, that isn't, it's not wrong, but it's not the best way of doing it. You don't have to do that. So if I move off now and show you some more examples of this. When I get towards the end of the road, just notice how I don't rush the gears. There's no need to rush them at all. So I'll do my mirrors, I'll signal, brake. I don't need to rush it. Brake, brake, get there. Then I come down to two, off we go. Remember the gears are for when you want to go forwards. So if you don't want to go forwards at that particular point, there's no point in getting the gear done. Imagine if I come around this bend now, and there's a car coming towards me on the wrong side of the road. There isn't, but imagine there was. Clutch, wait, on, okay. There's no rush. Try not to rush it when you do these turns, because many people just try and do it so fast to begin with. Um, you can't do it that fast to begin with. You have to kind of build up towards doing it kind of fast. So anyway, I'm going to get to the the road again, and I should do another left turn. Now again, this is, as I keep saying, I keep stressing this point, if you're watching this and thinking, well, I don't get it, you won't learn to drive just from watching videos. You cannot learn to drive just watching videos online. It doesn't work. You've got to get out there and practice this. So braking, I've done my mirror signal, brake, clutch, steer, no rush at all, wait, stop in third, doesn't matter. Handbrake on, into one, looking, and off we go. So yeah, um, this is mainly meant for pupils of mine, this video, who want to kind of recap on what we said. Um, if you're watching this thinking, well I don't get it, I don't know how to turn left, you need to get out in the car and practice, but this is the theory of how you should actually do it. So when I go left again, but next time I'm going to start introducing a different way of doing it, which is a whole new topic and something I'll be covering in the next video, but before then this bus is in the way, so it's got to break one, it's kind of what I'm doing now, no, so I'm not stopping dead. I'm keeping the car moving. Now, if I can't go at all, because these bus drivers are having a chat, <laughs> I can just stop dead, handbrake on, that's fine. Um, but whenever you can, uh, no need to check the blind spot there because there's no one around, I'm not, I'm not moving off from the side of the road. So, mirrors, signal, brake, no clutch because I'm not going to change gear. Remember, you only press the clutch down if you're going to stop or change gear. I'm not doing either of those things because second's fine. So mirror, signal, brake, round again. Now, this next thing is what I'll be looking at more in my next video, which is when I'm going to start looking more again at clutch control. I've already done a video on clutch control, um, but I didn't do it so much when coming out of junctions. But remember, two lines at the end of the road being give way. So you don't necessarily have to stop dead, in fact you don't want to stop dead. Great example now, that car is going to be behind me, the white car. So when he comes out, I check my mirrors and I know he's there. Signal has passed that road. I don't want to stop and slow him down. So I go brake, clutch, steer, then gear, look, go. That's how you should emerge from a junction. Um, you should not be stopping dead all the time. As I mentioned earlier on, we only did that earlier um, because people need to practice. It's no good if your people get to the end of the road and they need to stop and they can't because they haven't done it before. So you always need to teach people how to stop to begin with, but very quickly you move away from that and you get on to um, how to, what you call, uh, how to emerge from a junction using clutch control. So Ryan's getting second, notice how I'm passing the wheel through my hands. Again, steering is a different topic which I'll go over in a second. Lots and lots to cover on turning left. We take hours and hours and hours to, to practice turning left. And people who say, oh, I did it in five minutes. Well, you haven't done it properly, that's why. <laughs> or you might just be lucky and be natural. Um, some people pick it up naturally and they can do it straight away. But most times, 
um, you can spend at least two hours doing this route round and round and round with pupils and they still might not get it. So don't worry if you don't understand it straight away. It takes hours and hours of practice for most people to get the hang of. So let me show you now a little bit about steering. So I'm just going to pull over there. So when you steer around a corner you might notice I'm doing um, the best method of steering that there is which is what you call pull push. Now the way you do pull push steering is your hand goes on top of the steering wheel like that. If you want to go left, your left hand goes on top of the wheel. You then pull the wheel down with your left hand to there. Your right hand meets it at the bottom and pushes up. Your left hand then meets the top and pulls it down and you repeat that. So if you want to turn right, your right hand goes on top of the wheel, pulls down. Your left hand meets at the bottom, pushes up. Right hand meets at the top and pulls down. Now I will be doing a separate video on this because it's an important thing you need to know about but quite simply your left hand should stay on the left half of the, wheel, of the wheel and the right hand should stay on the right half of the wheel. The reasons for that have already been over in previous videos but I'll mention them again briefly now. If you look in the middle of most steering wheels there's an airbag in most modern cars. If you all go around the bend and you've got your arm like this that airbag is going to smash your arm or it'll smash your hand back into your head and it can knock you out. And it can sound funny, I know, but I've spoken to police who have been to accidents where people have had watches stuck in their head because the airbag's gone off, bang, your watch goes right in your head. And you might think it sounds funny, but how would you fancy having the imprint of a watch in your forehead for the rest of your life? If you don't want that problem, either don't wear a watch. You notice know, advanced drivers often don't wear watches. One reason I'll never wear a watch, it minimises the damage you can take from driving. Um, but yeah, that's another topic, is the steering, but just so you've got a rough idea there of what I'm doing. So there you go, that's just a brief look at how to turn left, and as I've already said twice in this video so far, these videos are not meant to be placed driving lessons, please don't think that you can watch a video or learn how to drive, it's not that simple, you've got to get out there and practice it and do it, but if you're having lessons with me, learning with me, um, I hope this will help you if you've just done a lesson on turning left and you wanted to kind of recap on a few things that we've done.